Welcome to Painting with Gwen. Today I'm going to be doing a step-by-step -step tutorial for beginners. We're going to be creating our version of Homage to Monet, Water Lily Pond as Givernay. Here's an example of how your final painting will look. It's based on Monet's series I did of his garden as Givernay in the south of France. The first thing I do with every painting is I cover the canvas with a neutral tone. I have three colors here, yellow, purple, and brown, and then I mix it with a generous amount of white to create a neutral tone, to create a base for my painting on my canvas. I'm using a stretched canvas here. You can basically use any size and really any proportion that you would like. Uh, just use it in just scale it up or scale it down depending on what you like. This one is actually 16 by 20 inches. So I'm going to start by just covering the canvas with the paint. Don't use more than say 25% water mixed in with this with this paint that you're using in the beginning because you want to make sure that you cover the canvas well and that it adheres to the canvas. Okay, I'm going to fa first paint the three sides after I've f covered the front. Let it dry and turn the canvas once the edges are dry and cover the last wet edge. Step two is I'm going to create a blue gradation. Now this is really a reflection in the pond of the sky. So it's going to start out light at the top, almost white with a little bit of blue and get progressively darker to the bottom of the canvas where it's like a medium blue. I wouldn't really call it dark, but it's sort of a, a medium blue and then a gradation in between. So I'm also going to be mixing in other colors besides just the blues and the greens. I'm going to mix in colors from the other side of the color wheel, the complementary colors, the oranges and the reds, little dots of yellow, I want to have a wide variety of colors and tones in my gradation so it looks natural. In a pond, there would be all sorts of variations in there from algae to debris. So you want to kind of recreate that loosely in your painting. We're working in the Impressionist style. And a lot of the Impressionists uh, use the theory of the eye of the viewer mixing the colors on the canvas. So you don't have to mix your colors up perfectly well on your palette. You can just mix them gently in your palette and then spread them on the canvas when leaving some of it completely unblended and some of it more well blended. So this dark blue here at the bottom is about as dark as I'm going to go. And I'm going to make the transition in between the light color at the top and the darker blue at the bottom. This is really a reflection of the sky. So normally the sky would be darker at the top, but since this is a reflection, everything is reversed. So the bottom of the canvas will be the darker. I mix in a little bit of the complementary colors, the oranges and the yellows, and gently blend it in. See, it really adds life to your colors, as opposed to just using blues and greens.
Now I've got a nice blue gradation. I've got some various colors mixed in there as well. Some violets, some greens, and I like the way that's looking. So the next step I'm going to do is add in the reflection of the clouds. So again, you've got to remember that we're painting the clouds basically upside down. So we're going to have the highlights of the clouds at the towards the bottom of the canvas. So I'm going to start sketching them in with basically white mixed with, in with a little bit of this and a little bit of that, a little blue, a little green, violet, yellow. But I'm painting the cloud reflections in the water. You want to make sure not to have any hard edges. So towards the edges of your clouds, you can start to let your brush get a little bit dry. So you can kind of sketch in the edges of the brush and the edges of the cloud with the brush. You don't want it to be any harsh or sharp edges. These are clouds after all. Now, as I'm working, my brushes are getting progressively smaller. As you add more detail, they can get smaller and smaller. Choose whichever brushes you're comfortable with. I'm using acrylic paint, so I tend to use a, the stiffer hair brushes. But as I get into more detail, I'll use the softer and softer brushes as well. They're more point, pointy brushes. But this is the Impressionist style, so we don't have... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, we don't ever have that much detail. We're not trying to replicate nature exactly. We're just trying to get an impression of nature and evoke a feeling in the viewer. Now... This looks pretty good. I'm happy with the clouds the way they're looking. So the next step I'm going to do is to render the trees. I start sketching in the trees. I'm using the greens and to make the greens I'm using yellows, blues, and of course a little bit of the complementary colors. This is step four. Now these are willow trees so the, the leaves are going to grow in a basically vertical direction. But again, we're painting it upside down. So we're going to have some of the brighter colors at the top, the brighter, lighter colors at the top, which will actually be towards the bottom since it's an upside down painting really right now. We're just painting the reflections on the top of the water. So your trees won't look exactly like mine, but you get a general idea of the kind of shapes, the kinds of shapes you want to create. Random shapes. You don't want to create too much of a pattern because that won't look natural. If I get that my color is a little bit too green, a little too artificial looking, I add in a little bit of the complementary colors, the reds and the oranges. Now I'm painting a little bit of the ground here. You just want to see a touch at the top of the ground where the trees are growing on top of. So. I'm just using a little bit darker green, using some blue, 
and yellow. Now bear in mind what you're looking at is my canvas is at an angle so it looks maybe like a little bit of an angle going on in my lines that are going across but really they're going straight across. Now the next step, those trees are looking pretty good. My next step is to add the water lily shadows. So I've been painting reflections and now I'm going to paint some shadows that I'm going to put the water lilies on top of. So I'm going to start sketching in where I want my water lilies to go. And remember in perspective, the objects that are further away appear smaller. So the, sh the water lilies in the front are going to be larger than the ones as they recede into space. Also, since the water lily pads are basically circles, as a circle recedes in space, this is according to perspective, it will become more and more elliptical till in the background, it'll almost appear as if they're lines. In the front, they're going to look more like circles. So I'm going to sketch these in randomly and you place yours where you'd like. You might want a few more or a few fewer than I have. I'm using a smaller brush here as well so I can get some a little more detail. Now your instinct may have been to paint the shadows secondly after you've painted the the pads, but the the trick is to paint the shadows first. Then when you go in to paint the water lilies on top, you don't have to be as careful as you would have to be if you were painting the shadows in underneath. The next step will be to paint the water lily pads. I'll paint those on top with a light green. I don't want them all to be the exact same color, so I'm having a little bit of variety in the green. You're mixing, of course, the blues, some white, some yellow, some of the complementary colors. I'm having fun with the paint. Remember, as it goes back in space, the colors are less defined, so I'm going to put a little more of the complement in, which is orange. Orange and red would be the complement. Now, the last step would be to add the water lily blooms, which is basically white with 
a little bit of everything, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of pink, violet, blue. And I'm going to just sketch in the flowers very casually. And of course, making the larger ones in the front as they get back in space, the ones in the back look almost just like dots. The ones in the front have more detail, of course. Putting the little ones in the back. Now the ones in the back, the colors are less bright, as well as the white being a little more dull. You're only going to see pure white in the foreground. So I'm going to put just little dots back here to indicate, give the impression of water lily blooms. And I'm pretty happy with the way that looks. Now the back ground where I painted, looks a little too dark to me, so I'm going to go in and touch that up with a little lighter greens. A little yellow, a little lighter greens back there. Got a little too dark. I'm going to touch that up a little bit. We're almost done. Here's Claude Monet in his studio. Notice how large his versions of these paintings were. Well, I really hope you enjoyed painting with Gwen. I would love to see the examples of your work, how your paintings turned out. So please subscribe to my channel.